Oh God, you're wonderful. You're beautiful. You're amazing. Thank you once again for your loving kindness. Ah, and your mercy is that I knew every morning. Praise the name of the Most High God. I'm so happy to be here once again in the presence of God, being able to stand before you as he downloads and release to you. So I say a heartfelt kingdom greetings to my global family and to the family of Kingdom Restoration International. We truly, truly are blessed at King Kingdom Restoration International. We truly thank God for all that he has done and all that he continues to do. Today, I want to get straight into the word because we have so much to learn yet about all that is taking place, and I have so much to say about it. Today, we are looking at preparedness part two. I know you had part one, and today we're going to look at preparedness part two, and the objective is for us to remain steadfast and committed. Steadfast and committed. Now, in preparedness part one, we looked at Matthew 24, 1 to 14. Today, we will be looking at Matthew 24, verse 15, and also Daniel chapter 9, 24 to 27, and uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15, and some other scriptures. It's going to be very textual, but I need you to get this as God has set us in our prepared state. Preparedness is the watchword right now for us as we go forth and we understand that the days are shorter, the days are numbered, and things are happening as it is written. So we are looking at preparedness part two. Okay, so in Matthew chapter 24, and I need you to track with me and take notes as much as possible, okay? And you can also see this message again on YouTube, so you can have that information, but take notes accordingly. Okay, so let's, let's look straight into the word. Matthew chapter 24 verse 15 says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Now, we are looking at Matthew 24, verse 15, but here it relates to Daniel. It is sending us to reference Daniel. So in order to understand all of Matthew 24, we, we are seeing clearly, it says in Matthew 24, verse 15, it sends us straight to Daniel. It says, therefore, when to see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, Whoever reads, let him understand. So to understand Matthew 24, you have to gain the knowledge of all related scriptures. The biblical view is the only relevant and accurate view that aligns with God's thoughts on the matter. There are those who have formed a belief system that's erroneous and unbiblical. And you, you will find that happening and it's happening all now. We, we believe in the pre-tribulational rapture and that is validated in the written word. Others believe many other things. Some don't even believe in the rapture. So we're going to go through this journey and I'm hoping by the help of the Spirit of God, you will get a greater understanding just in case you did not believe or just in, ca in case you are confused about it, okay? So I'm going to try to teach this today. I'm not going to preach, I'm going to teach. Okay, I'm going to try at least. The church, the bride will be raptured before the great tribulation. I know right now we're going through persecution and trials and testing and it feels like tribulation. But there is a great tribulation coming and we will be taken away before that happens. So if you feel this is bad, just think about it's going to be 10,000 times or even more worse than this. There are many who believe otherwise without valid documented proof. But our proof is in the word of God. The account in Daniel chapter 9 is the key element to understanding prof prophecy and end times. Specifically prophecy and end times. So you want to look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 9. And we might not be able to go through um, all of chapter 9, but I will give you a summary and then we will focus on a few verses. It's important that you accurately align the word of God regarding the end times. 
Because you don't want to reach to a place where it's the end and you're still uh, trying to journey toward the end. You have to know what's happening. This can't be um, just something that you imagine or you think that would happen. You have to have proof in the word of God. So this can't be about your opinions or your view on the matter. This must be a synchronized and seamless flow of what is written and understood regarding the chronological and prophetic move of God. Just to give a little history before we get into Daniel chapter 9. In, in chapter 9, by this time, Daniel was already um, taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel became a servant in the Persian kingdom. So it's from that place now, he is seeking God. And in Daniel chapter 9, and I will summarize verses 1 to about 19 for you. Daniel cries out to God for himself and Israel as he confessed their sins. Daniel was very concerned about the future of Israel. He stood in the gap praying and asking God for answers regarding Israel, regarding Israel's status as a nation and all the covenants that were made. He even said, I, Daniel, understood by the books, that's in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. He says, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet. That he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And stick with me, I'm going somewhere. So as we continue and we, we look at Daniel chapter 9 from probably, let's say, verses 16 to 19. Um, this to me was a very impactful prayer. I, I read it before, looked at it before, but I, I believe because I'm seeing so many signs and so many things happening now, I looked carefully at, at what he said and how he said it. In Daniel chapter 9 from verse 16 to about 19, it says, O Lord, according to all your righteousness, I pray, let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem. Your holy mountain because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and your people are a reproach to all those around them or around us. In verse 17 it says, Now therefore, O God, Hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications. And for the Lord's sake, cause your face to shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. Verse 18, oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolation. And the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplication before you because of our righteous deeds. But because of your great mercies. Hallelujah. Verse 19. He says, oh Lord, hear. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. Now that was such a powerful prayer. It's the kind of prayer that we should be praying or we should pray regarding our nation. Those of you who are looking on globally, your nation you could stand and you could pray. It took Daniel one man and he went before God and he prayed. He prayed for himself. He prayed for his nation. He prayed for the sin. He prayed that God will look upon them. Imagine one man standing in the gap for his nation. What about you? What are you doing for your nation? How are you praying for your nation? Are you praying for your nation? Right now, the nation of Trinidad and Tobago, we, we need to come together and pray like never before. Like never before. This prayer really touched me. And it's a prayer we can look at and we can glean things from. And go before God regarding our nation. 
as it continues in Daniel chapter 9 verses 20 to 27 and this is where I want to focus on for us to get a deeper understanding as we go through the entire Matthew 24 but we are here today on Matthew 24 verse 15 which relates and send us straight to Daniel to look at Daniel chapter 9 and it says here in verse 20 now while I was speaking praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presented my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain, uh, mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer. So he's emphasizing here. He says, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly and pay attention to this. Whom he saw while he was even praying from the very beginning. Being caused to fly swiftly reached me about the time of the evening offering. And it continues. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. Now something got my attention there. He said, Oh Daniel, I have now come forth. To give you skill to understand. Daniel's prayer was so impactful that it was with immediate effect. Uh, uh, Gabriel was sent to him, reached him the evening and said to him, Oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. You see, Daniel had skills. As a matter of fact, he would not have been chosen by Nebuchadnezzar if he did not have skill. Himself and his three friends, the three Hebrew boys they were quite skillful they were good to look at and they were good looking and they were very very knowledgeable so Daniel had skills but understanding this matter that he was praying about requires required special skills it required critical thinking and revelation from God so understanding is a skill by itself and it's also a gift he gave understanding and he increases God that is increases understanding and you need to know that you need the skill to understand and to interpret we know that we don't know everything yet we behave as though we know and you cannot just grab information from all over the net and you, you know and you're just googling this and looking at that and looking for this and just taking information all over and you're not into the word of God for yourselves allow there to be some kind of connection allow the accuracy to be so transparent and and so relevant to what you are seeing written in the word of God and what you're hearing outside of that okay so you need to develop special skills and you need to cry out to God and he will release it God wants us, he wants you, he wants me. He wants us to understand what is happening and what will happen. We need to understand that we need the divine skills to comprehend the end times. Crowding your mind with irrelevant, er erroneous information is very unprofitable and very dangerous. The mind is the battlefield, people. Let your mind be stayed on him. Who He will keep you in what? Perfect peace. Your mind needs to stay on him. So I want you to declare in the midst of it all, I am steadfast and I'm committed. You have to be steadfast. Hallelujah. Always doing what you're called to do. Being who you are called to be. And you need Need to understand that requires commitment. Daniel was showing forth how committed he was although he was in captivity serving in a Persian kingdom he was crying out to God for himself and his people. He was steadfast and you remember the account with Daniel and the lion's den they found him doing what he was accustomed doing. Praying before the God. Is that that it's as though that's all Daniel knew. He knew to be committed to God. And his commitment was shown through prayer. Through constant communication. You want to understand what's taking place in this end times? Well then you need to get to the beginning straight to the end in the word of God. You, you cannot leave the word of God until the end. Because that's what's going to take you to the end. You need the skill to understand the last days and the end times. Oh my God, I said I was going to teach this. Oh 
oh my God. In Daniel, it says here, at the beginning of your supplications, the command went out. And I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Hallelujah. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. You need to understand the kind of posture Daniel had. He wanted to know what was going on, what would happen to him, what would happen to his people, the nation, one man crying out to God regarding his nation. You are set in a place for a time such as this regardless of where you're listening to this bro- this um, sermon, this message from, uh, you need to know you were set there on purpose, by purpose, for purpose. You need to get before God and cry out uh, for your nation and God will send the answer. He will send the necessary skills. He will increase your understanding so you can tell them what is happening. Uh, hallelujah and what's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. At at the very beginning of Daniel's prayer, the angel was commanded to appear before him. At the very beginning, what kind of posture he had. As soon as he started, results, hallelujah, hallelujah. As soon as he started, results was released, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, we know before we call, God will answer. So all he needs is some ignition from on the inside of you. You got to go before him with faith and expect him to answer. God looked upon light as precious, pleasurable, and pleasing And he looked at Daniel the same way. I'm seeing the connectivity. I'm seeing how Daniel was the salt of the earth and how he was the light of the world. He was impacting everywhere and anywhere he went. All Daniel had to do was show up and the place got very salty and it was lit. Oh, come on somebody. Have you considered what happens when you pray? Have you considered that Your posture when going before God, before you even begin to pray, you must be in a place where you expect answers. It means you set yourself up from the inside out. You you just go before God knowing that you're in the right place at the right time before the only God who is righteous, who is holy, who is well able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you may ask or think. Have you considered what happens when you pray? Hmm. You see, Daniel was told, you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. When you go before God, you have to consider the matter. And you have to understand what you're seeing and see what you're understanding. And when you see what you're understanding, the consideration level will increase. You will consider greatly. You will get into a state of critical thinking where you will think about what you're thinking about and God shared something with me by the Holy Spirit he said don't only think about what you're thinking about but think about what you're thinking about in me hallelujah through me and with me you got to think with God think through God hallelujah and allow God to, uh, allow his thoughts to flow through you that is what you call critical thinking as a matter of fact that is called kingdom thinking hallelujah. praise the name of the Lord somebody you see Daniel was told to think carefully, to think critically, to think kingdomly <laughs> about what he was before God and what the angel Gabriel came to say to him. Think about it and look attentively at it. Look again, think again, intentionally think about this matter. You have to understand, you have to learn how to stay mentally aligned with God before you go into prayer, during prayer and after prayer. As a matter of fact, you ought to be praying in season and out of season. Do I mean don't say anything else except for pray? Let everything you say be like a prayer on a God. In other words, just speak the word because that's prayer. You release the word over every situation, hallelujah, in your life. And every day you're praying all the time, every way, every way and in every way. You will be praying. I'm learning that. Prayer is not just crying out to God and saying all about talking about all your troubles. Release the word back to him. He will respond. 
praise the name of the Lord. You have to learn to remain steadfast and committed. Come on, declare, I am steadfast and I am committed. Hallelujah. Verse 24, it says, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. One, to finish the transgression, to make an end to sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. And those are the six things. Six things are spoken about here in Daniel regarding the 70 weeks. And let me just tell you a little bit about the 70 weeks so you can understand. In Hebrew, the word used for 70 weeks is, is Shabua. And it's 70 sevens, which is 70 multiplied by seven years. And that gives you 490 years. Now, Daniel was now informed of the chronological accomplishments of things to come. Keep tracking with me now. Now, this is crucial for you to understand why. Because Daniel was told about six things that will be accomplished in the 70th week, in the 70 weeks, which is the, in the 490 years. Keep in mind that this was concerning the nation of Israel. But then look at this. The six things listed here. And pay attention. It says to finish the transgression. To make an end of sins. To make reconciliation for iniquity. To bring in everlasting righteousness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now when you look at, before I say the other two. To bring in everlasting righteousness, you can reference uh, Isaiah 11 and that's when Jesus is called the branch of righteousness. To, uh, and it continues here to say, to seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So you need to understand there will be a re-establishing of the holy temple of God on the earth. The temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. This happened just like uh, prophet Jeremiah prophesied. And as Ezekiel saw, the, you know, the glory departed. Ichabod, the glory has departed from the temple. So in verse 25, you will see here, it says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem until, Jerem until Messiah the prince... There shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again. And the wall even in trouble sometimes. So let me just explain this a bit. Seven weeks and 62 weeks. That's equal to 69 weeks. Look carefully now to what is revealed to Daniel. He is told here... That the 490 years period that is needed to fulfill these six things has a genesis and a revelation. It has a beginning and an end. It's referred to as the prophetic clock. So we must look at this from a chronological perspective or else we could misinterpret the times, the events and the seasons. Some of what is revealed to Daniel has already happened. Are you understanding this? He was told in verse 25, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince. You can reference this in Jeremiah chapter 2. And you need to study your word. Therefore, or, or, or when you look there, you'll see that in 445 BC, before Christ, King Axerxes, that's the king of Persia, gave Nehemiah the command to go and restore Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was restored. You have to keep tracking with history to see the manifestation and accomplishments of the 490 years. After the command... In Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, 
was initiated. You, you need to keep tracking. As you keep tracking, you will see that, like I said before, right after the command there in Daniel chapter 9, you would, you would understand that as you keep tracking, you would see that there would be, what, 69 weeks given until our Messiah, the Prince, who is Jesus Christ. He who was cut off on Palm Sunday, then crucified and was buried, rose from the dead, and thank God he's alive today. So when you track that, you will see. You see, Jesus gave the Jews an opportunity to be established, to be reestablished when he offered them the kingdom and to fulfill the Davidic promise of, uh, to Israel as a nation, but they rejected him. Now, the first 69 weeks, which is 483 years, are already fulfilled. And that is 69 by 7. That is 69 by 7, which will give you the 483 years. 483 years. Right? So this was fulfilled from the commandment Daniel received straight through when, until Jesus was cut off. Those things were fulfilled. Now when Daniel, and I, I know this is a, a, a bit much to take in, especially if you haven't studied, but we're going to go through it and we're going to break things down as you go along. So keep tracking and keep tuning in every Sunday as God allows. Right, so, and after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not from himself. And the people of the prince, now we're continuing now in Daniel chapter 9, as you continue, we'll see after that, the people will be cut off. So that's after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince, watch this now, and the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now, the people of the prince here is referring to the Roman Empire. In 870, the Roman Empire did destroy the city and the sanctuary according to the historical facts. This was done under Titus, the Roman general. Keep tracking with me. This, is, this too was fulfilled. So you're seeing and tracking how many things have already been fulfilled. The people of the prince, however, who is to come, the people will be deceived by this prince who is not the Messiah. This prince here is referring to the Antichrist whom people will lift up, who they will worship as the Messiah, the Christ. You must observe what is going on now. There is going to be an emergent of Roman Empire who will, of the Roman Empire, who will re be revived to rule once again. Keep tracking and you would see. Look at the emerging that is taking place right now in the Middle East and in, in Europe and in the surrounding nations. There is going to be an emerging. When you read Daniel chapter 7, you'll see that it is from this empire that the Antichrist will arise. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. That's the Antichrist. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to the sacrifice and offering. The he that they're referring to here again, is referring to the Antichrist who will make a covenant with the Jews for one week and that is known as seven years. He, Antichrist, will make a covenant with the Jews for seven years so that they can resume all their spiritual habits and worship rituals like sacrifices and offerings. This is what they'll be doing at the beginning of the tribulation period. But then suddenly, the tribulation period begins um, to, 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 to go well as a beginning. But then suddenly, in the middle of it, he just decides to change things. Now, understand this. The tribulation period begins with the signing of the peace treaty. The signing of the peace treaty. Pay attention to that. And that's coming pretty soon. How soon? Only God knows, but it's coming soon. Now, just when the Jews think all was going great, in the middle, 
The Antichrist comes in and he decides to break his covenant and stop all of it. This is when the Antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation, which Jesus spoke about in Matthew chapter 24. Hope you're tracking with me. This is one sign that will clearly tell you that this man is the Antichrist. It says here, and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolation, even until consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. So understand the first 69 weeks, which is 483 years, have been fulfilled from Nehemiah chapter 2, each week followed consecutively except for the 70th week. When the Jews rejected Jesus as their king, the plan for Israel was then interrupted. And now the church occupies that time between 69th week and the 70th week. There's, therefore, the 70th week is yet to be fulfilled. Please keep tracking with me. And we're going to give more details as we go along. So in Daniel, it says the seven, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. So look again. Listen again. Six things in Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, 24. We have not seen active on the earth. Look for those six things. They are not active on the earth just yet. The finish of transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Six things. The thing is, every word of God must be fulfilled. So this thick, those six things must be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot of, or one uh, tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled are you with me somebody Matthew 24 34 says verily I say unto you this generation shall pass till all these things are in this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled and Mark chapter 13 verse 4 says tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign when these things shall be fulfilled Luke 21, 22 and 32 it says, for, the, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. So 70 weeks. That 70 weeks that was spoken of and the 69 weeks have been fulfilled. So I, I can stand firm in the fact that 69 of the 70 weeks has, have already been, um, has already been fulfilled. Are you with me? So I stand firmly in the belief that God will fulfill the 70th week. The church, the ecclesia or Ecclesia, some will say, will continue until the rapture. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verses 51 to 58, it says clearly here, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Hallelujah. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, hallelujah, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Oh, there is a blessed hope. Hallelujah. Verse 53 says, for this corruptible must put on incorruptible and this mortal must be on must put on immortality 
Verse 54, hallelujah. So when this incorrupt, when this corruptible has put on incorruptible and this mortal has put on immortality, hallelujah, glory be to God, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But, but, thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 58 says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord you need to understand that you need to be steadfast and unmovable now there are other scriptures references hallelujah that is relating to the church being raptured but isn't this a blessed hope in a moment in a twinkling of an eye twinkle and you will see how quick that is hallelujah unless you have some coal in your eye and it ain't going right down but you twinkle and you will see how quick it is we will be taken up so after the church is ruptured then there will be great tribulation that great tribulation period it is going to take place that will be the final 70th week of Daniel's prophecy after the 70th week is accomplished Jesus according to Revelation chapter 19 will come and fight the battle of Armageddon hallelujah then according to Revelation chapter 20 Jesus will then rule the world for a thousand years following that will be the judgment of all the unsaved who will be cast into the lake of fire hallelujah thank god that's not gonna be you that's not gonna be me that's not gonna be us in the name of jesus you see this is called the white throne judgment thank you god we're not gonna be here for that you better thank god in advance and live the way hallelujah that you, of all that you just said you live that way that you would not be in that then according to revelations 21 and 22 it says there will be a new heaven and the new earth the new jerusalem coming down to the earth you need to pay attention of what is happening now as we journey we will be looking at this uh, in greater details but I'm giving you that synopsis of what hallelujah you need to start looking for you need to pay attention to I hope those of you who didn't know and who didn't who don't didn't understand any of this before you are now in a better place of greater knowledge and 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 you're more hopeful and you you have peace on the inside that there will be great tribulation but if you live according to what is written here you will not be a part of that Matthew 24 verse 15 Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Whoever reads, let him understand. Listen to me. Think until you understand. Think until you arrive at a conclusion. Hallelujah. That will lead you to the pathway of truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Think until your thoughts are synchronized with God and his word. Always think from inside the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Thought is such a dynamic force that when used accurately and is aligned with the thoughts of God for your life, it literally transforms your life. It transforms your mind. Hallelujah. Demonstrate your faith and walk in obedience. Engage. Alter. Trust. You need to understand. You must be steadfast and committed. Lift your voices and declare, God, I am steadfast and I am committed. Hallelujah. Because I'm kept by you. You said I'm the soul of the earth and I'm the light of the world I am steadfast and I am committed God I am triumphant through you I am more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 says therefore my beloved be steadfast 
immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord Psalms 37 verses 3 to 6 says trust in the Lord and do good dwell in the land and feed of his faithfulness delight yourself always in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart come on somebody commit your way to the Lord trust always in him and he shall bring it to pass that's the kind of God we are talking about he shall bring forth your righteousness hallelujah he shall bring it forth hallelujah bring forth your righteousness as the light oh my God are you understanding why he says you are the light of the world he is going to bring forth your righteousness as the light hallelujah and your justice as the noonday do you understand how hot the noonday is but not just hot it's bright like that you need to arise saints it's time in the name of Jesus it's time for, for understanding it says whoever reads let him understand it's time to be steadfast it's time to be committed you need to know where commitment lies you need to know where your loyalty lies look at Daniel look again look at the kind of prayer he prayed he was never a selfish man he's always before God regarding himself making sure that he is sin free hallelujah but he always stands in the gap for his nation what are you doing who are you standing for who are you standing with hallelujah are you even standing you need to understand it's time for to show forth your loyalty it's time to show forth your steadfastness and your commitment you got to declare Lord I am steadfast and I am committed because this is what is required of me today. Whoever reads, let him understand. I declare today that there will be increase in your understanding. I release it over your life. I know some of what I've said, you have to go through again and chew on it. But there's a lot more to it. You have to connect the word of God because nothing in the word of God is disconnected. And let me tell you something about your life. Nothing about your life is disconnected. Nothing about your life is fragmented. You are complete in him. You hear me somebody? You are complete in him. So you all you have to do is remain steadfast. Remain committed. Come on declare it. God I'm steadfast and I am committed. I stand loyal. I remain loyal in the name of Jesus. I am faithful. I love you Lord. Just lift your voices all over this place and give them a high note of praise and glory and honor because he deserves the praise he deserves the glory he deserves the honor there is none like unto him I wish I had somebody to praise him I wish I had somebody to understand that in a moment ha, in a in the twinkling of an eye hallelujah we will be caught up we shall be caught up with him do you understand the blessed hope and privilege we have lift your voices lift your wash hands take the mask off of your praise take the mask off of your worship hallelujah Hallelujah, and just shout unto God with a voice of triumph. There is hope for us. I declare he's coming back for his bride without spot and without wrinkle. You got to remain steadfast and you got to remain committed. In the name of Jesus the Christ, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Praise the name of the Lord, for he's worthy. He's worthy.